Academy students, welcome to Hunger Games History. This is a new series in which we will go over the events of every year of the Hunger Games and the changes that were implemented in the event throughout the years. In our very first lesson, we will be going over the events of the first ever Hunger Games. Everything about the concept itself was very new, even for Azirata capital. So no one really knew what to expect, and likely neither would you with the knowledge that you have today, as the Hunger Games did not start the way we all know them to be. The reaping system was mostly the same, but back then, it was the mayor of the district who held the ceremony and drafted the names. The tributes were not treated as celebrities, and neither were the games seen as the big festivity they are today. The tribute parade, the interview, and even the training center were still not a thing back then. The tributes were simply raffled, thrown into a train, and taken to the capital. For all of the first 10 years, a period that we refer to as the Old Games, this event was held in the Capital Arena, a building that hosted many events at the Capital throughout the years. As this tradition had just been put into practice, a live audience was allowed inside for the first year, with peacekeepers surrounding the inner circle, all ready to shoot, in order to prevent any attempt from tribute to get close. Many tributes did not even make it to the Capital alive. Due to the precarious conditions of the trip, as well as their already weakened condition coming from the districts. Complications started right at the train, during the stop to pick up the tributes from District 5. Connie, their female tribute, freaked out when being placed inside the train, which ended up startling the other tributes, taking advantage of the mess to attempt to escape. To get the situation under control, the peacekeepers shot at them, killing seven. The girls from Districts 1, 3 and 5 and the boys from Districts 2, 6, 8, and 9. Completely terrified, none of the still-living tributes dared to react as the peacekeepers piled up the dead tributes outside, abandoning the bodies right there at the train station in District 5. For the remaining trip until the capital, none of the tributes dared to disturb the silence. Upon arrival, they were all transported from the train station to an animal pen. The tributes would spend the night inside it, to then be taken to the arena the day after. In the pen, conditions weren't the best. Everything was filthy, and no food or water were provided for the tributes. With peacekeepers not keeping a proper watch over the tributes, another incident happened during the night. Remus, a scrawny little boy from District 11, was barely able to stand up since he left his district which resulted in him starving to death right at the animal pen. Witnessing the little boy die in her arms, Cress, the 14-year-old girl from District 4, fell into despair and wouldn't stop weeping over the loss. This enraged Palmer, a bulky 18-year-old from District 7 with anger issues, who feared her crying would alert the peacekeepers nearby. He warned her again and again to keep her mouth shut and stop crying, but as she was unable to do it, Palmer eventually lost it and jumped at her neck, snapping it the same instant. Shocked to see his district partner being murdered in such a way, Lionel, from District 4, lunged at the killer. The fight was not turning in his favor, as Lionel was not as big or as strong as Palmer. Other tributes quickly realized that the boy from District 7 could easily defeat anyone from the way he was dealing with both tributes from District 4 with little effort so they make the decision to help take care of the problem. Calix, the boy from District 1, and Gideon, from District 10, joined forces with Lionel right there to bring Palmer down. No peacekeeper intervened, nor seemed curious to investigate what was all the shouting coming from the pen. After all, it was expected by everyone in the capital to see them act like animals. In the end, with Palmer losing the battle, the three boys all dragged the body each to a corner of the animal pen keeping them away from other tributes. The next morning, when peacekeepers came to take the tribute to the arena, they found out another tribute had passed away. Hyla, the 15-year-old from District 2 who had been shot in the leg, as peacekeepers intervened when the train stopped at District 5, ended up bleeding out that night. And, like that, only 13 tributes made it to the arena alive. Not knowing what to expect from the games, the fear and confusion of the tributes was very noticeable. 
translating into their agitated behavior as they were brought to the arena. The bleachers of the Capitol Arena were packed, and the crowd was in a frenzy. From the moment the tributes were brought inside the arena and were put in their designated places, the Capitol citizens started insulting and booing them, vengeful for all they had gone through during the dark days. The tributes were so distraught by this that they missed the cue signaling the start of the games. After the horrible events they had witnessed the day before, the reality just hit that things were about to get even worse. Some tributes sat down and cried on the floor. Others simply glared at each other and at the pile of weapons placed in the center of the arena. Minutes passed by, and not a single tribute had moved. The crowd got louder, annoyed that nothing was happening. Until, a shot coming from the peacekeeper stand made everything quiet. Tuela, the skinny girl from District 8, who had just been sitting down crying while hugging her legs, dropped dead from the gunshot. Three more shots followed the first, taking down the tributes that looked the weakest, the pair from District 12 and the girl from 11. Kalex, from District 1, was the first to take action as soon as he realized what was happening. Running towards the pile of weapons and picking up Machete immediately after seeing the second tribute fall, the exact moment Kalix picked up his weapon was when the shot ceased. Kalix made his way towards the girl from District 6, who was still frozen in shock from the shootings. When she realized Kalix was coming in her direction, she started pleading for her life. Kalix had his weapon raised, ready to swing at her, but froze in hesitation as the girl begged for mercy. It was then that another shot was fired, this time hitting the girl from District 9, who was standing very close to Kalix. Knowing that he would be next, he took a deep breath and with no more hesitation, stabbed the girl from District 6. The crowd went wild in celebration. After all, Kalix had just caused the first ever real Hunger Games kill. Gideon from District 10 and Lionel from District 4 quickly followed his lead and rushed to get weapons of their own, an axe and a spear, respectively. They faced each other, trying to figure out what the other was about to do. At that moment, another tribute ran towards the pile. Boreas, the boy from District 5, barely had time to reach for a machete before Gideon attacked him with his axe. Lionel takes a step back, trying to take everything in as he watches the carnage that was now taking place in the arena. Kalix was engaged in a bloody fight with the girl from District 10, while Gideon was now taking down the boy from 3. Lost in all the chaos, Lionel didn't notice how the girl from District 7, Leafy, had approached the weapon pile and managed to take two small axes with her. Even though the girl didn't seem much of a threat, she was able to disarm Gideon, following by hitting him in the shoulder and in his left leg, making him fall on the ground. Then, she threw one of her axes straight at Kalix's head, taking down the powerful tribute from District 1. After taking Gideon's bigger axe with her, Leafy advanced onto Lionel. The boy, who had been frozen in shock until then, instinctively threw his spear when he finally realized what was coming for him, which ended up hitting Leafy right in the neck. After an initial frenzy with all the action that had just taken place, the audience was now silent, anticipating the end. Only Gideon's painful screams could be heard. Lionel stood there, staring at the boy laying on the floor, still with a small axe stuck in his leg. Several minutes went by, with Lionel unable to take action, until insults started being hollered from the bleachers. Once again, the peacekeepers readied their weapons. Upon hearing the guns cocking from right behind him, Lionel grabbed a nearby axe and made his way towards the other boy. In panic, Gideon tried to crawl away from him, using all the strength he had left. But with no injuries of his own, Lionel was faster and quickly reached his last opponent. With no more room for hesitation, under the threat of the peacekeepers, Lionel uses the axe to put an end to Gideon. Lionel Fallen, from District 4, was then announced the first ever victor of the Hunger Games.